Okay, today we're going to be estimating some products. We have done this in the past, so we are going to be using our compatible numbers we talked about yesterday. Okay, let's read the first problem. The Smith family opens the door of their refrigerator 32 times in one day. There are 31 days in May. About how many times is it open in May? So your highlighter should be ready. Your question is, about how many times is it open in May? What are some key words in there? Pin it in. About how many. So let's go ahead and underline that. About how many. Something that is important for us to know that when it says about how many, we are going to what? Estimate. The box to the right says to underline any information you will need. We always do what with our information we need? Circle, circle it. So what are the numbers that I'm going to use in my problem? Okay, 32 times in one day and 31 days in May. Now take a look at your problem. In the first way they want to teach you how to do this, you're going to use rounding and mental math. Mental math comes from yesterday. So you're going to estimate 32 times 31, and we are going to do step one, which is round each factor. What are they rounding 32 to? 30. So you're going to the tens place. What are they rounding 31 to be? 30. 30 as well. So you can see they have 30 times 30. So once they've done the rounding, they're then going to use their mental math and find your basic fact. So that means you're going to take off your zeros, and you're going to do three times three. What do you get with three times three? Nine. Nine. And then I want you to take a look at how many zeros you had in your problem. Two. Two. And that is how many you will add. One for each of the tens. So your answer is 900. So that means the Smith family opens their refrigerator door about 900 times during the month of May. That seems like a lot, doesn't it? Okay. Now, down here it says, on average, a refrigerator door is open 38 times each day. About how many fewer times in May is the Smith family's refrigerator door opened than the average refrigerator door? So we're going to go ahead and highlight the question again. Read it with me. How many fewer times in May is the Smith family's refrigerator door opened than the average? refrigerator door. Okay, so what in this problem do I need to use that I'm going to circle? Bailey, what am I going to circle here? The 38 times each day. And what's something that I have to use from the problem before here also? Aiden? Well, yeah, about how many is important to us, but if I only have one number here, where am I getting my other number? Summaries? Okay, which is which one? Which number from the top am I going to use? 32 is how many times in one day the Smith family did it. This one here says 38 times each day is the average. So am I going to use 32? So what's it asking me? The 31, which is? How many days are what? Uh -huh. Okay, so on average, refrigerator doors open 38 times each day, so we're going to use the 38. What is 38 round to? 40. 40, so you will write 40 down here. And we're going to put the multiplication problem here. And then what am I rounding my 31 to be? 30, which is what we had already rounded, so we did have to round again, right? Yes. So what's my basic fact here? Four times three, which gets me? Twelve. And how many zeros am I looking at in my problems? Two. Make sure that we get our comma in there. So that is what it would be on average in May, which is 1,200. But what was our question? About how many fewer times in May is the Smith family's refrigerator door open than the average? 
So this is the average. What did they get? 900. So what am I doing with my numbers? Raise your hand if you know. Morgan? Okay. So I'm going to take 1,200 minus their 900. And what do we get? Subtraction. 300 is correct. So 300 fewer times. So they're actually opening their refrigerator door less than the average. 900 seems like a lot to me in one month. But the average is 1,200 times. Yeah. Yeah, in a month for 31 days. Yeah, that was a month for 31 days. All right, go ahead and flip the page. We're going to talk about something different. All right, let's read. All 24 light bulbs in the Parks family home are CFL light bulbs. Each CFL light bulb uses 28 watts to produce light. About how many watts will the light bulbs use when turned on all at the same time? Highlight your question, please. Then we have about how many? Ian, can you tell me the numbers I'm going to use out of my problem this time? 24 light bulbs and 28 watts. So now we're going to learn what the compatible number thing is all about. We use compatible numbers. We know that they are numbers that are easy to compute mentally. I showed you a couple of examples yesterday. So today our estimate is 24 times 28. We need to make sure we get those estimated before. So 24, what did they estimate it to be? 25. Can somebody tell me why you think they went to 25? Sam? Well, that's not the nearest 10, so that can't be why. Eden? Okay, so he's saying that 24 is closer to 25. Instead of 20, they want to be more accurate. What do we do with 25? Is 25 a nice number to count by? Yeah, we know that we use it to count to 100, right? So 25 is something easier, all right? So they went ahead and went to 25. There's no problem with going to 25 instead of 20, okay? It's actually closer, and like Aiden says, it's going to be more accurate. You're going to get a closer estimate. And then they took the 28 and they rounded to 30, okay? Is everybody with me on why we did that for 24? You notice that they only did that for one of the numbers, okay? So now we're going to think 25 times the 3. So if we know anything about 25s, we know that we count one at a time. So 25, and then you say, and then 75. So 25 times 3 would be 75, and then I would have to add what to that? A zero. So you're going to have 750. Figure out my erasing here. 750 watts. Okay. Does everybody kind of understand what they did with compatible numbers? It's 24, it's very close to 25, and the 25 is easy to count by. Okay. All right, let's try some more down here then. We're going to estimate 26 times $79. So we're going to round to the nearest 10 on the first one, and in the second one, we're going to do the compatible. So they're going to show you how to do the same problem using two different strategies. So what is 26 rounded to the nearest 10? Brayden? Okay, so we'll put 30 in there. 79 rounded to the nearest 10 is what? Chase? So we'll fill that in down here. Find your simplified fact of 3 times 8, and I get 24. How many zeros do I have? There are two because you have one in the 30 and one in the 80. So if some of you need to make sure that you get both of those. So that means that 26 times $79 is about 2,400 what? 
So don't forget that dollar sign. If it's talking about dollars in there, you need to make sure you have that also. Okay, now let's go over here and let's do the same problem. This time we're going to do the compatible numbers. So they're rounding 26 this time to what? 25. 25. Then do they still have 80 for the 79? Yes, they do. So now we're going to take the 25 times 8. Now, you know that 25 times 4 from a couple chat or lessons ago that you did 25 times 4 was what? 100. So if 25 times 4 is 100, what's 25 times 8? 200. Is everybody with me on this? Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put the 200 here. Yes. How many zeros am I going to add? One. Okay, so we know now that using compatible numbers, 26 times $79 is about $2,000. So I want you to look at the differences between them. Okay, so now we're going to answer some questions. Explain to me why 2,400 and 2,000 are both reasonable estimates. They're close. What else could we say, Don Rees? He took yours. I want you to go back and look the, at the original factors that you started with. Are those numbers that you chose to round and to use compatible numbers still close to that factor? Yeah. We couldn't get too far away. 26 to 30 isn't too far away. And then 79 to 80 is only one. When I did compatible numbers, 26 to 25 was only one, and 79 and 80 was only Yes? So if we use our regular factors or go back to our original factors, you're going to see that they're both pretty close to that. So we're going to say both estimated products use numbers, so I'll let you use the number symbol, close to the original Both estimated products use numbers close to the original factors. Both estimated products use numbers close to the original factors. And as we looked at it, you could see that this number is 4 away from 30 and 1 away from 80. This is 1 away and 1 away. So which one is closer to the exact amount? The second one, because it has closer estimates. You probably would use compatible numbers if it's farther away from 25. Does that make sense? So if it was 28, you're going to use what? The round. Yep. Good question. All right, let's talk about this next one. And this is kind of something you get to think about. There's not just one situation that would work here. I want you to think about in what situation might you choose to find an estimate rather than an exact answer. So think about when in your life would you need to find an estimate rather than finding the exact number. Talk with your group for a second.